Welcome back once again. Uh, we are going to be in this video talking about some post regression things that we can do. We've already run our regression model uh, and now we want to plot it. Uh, so we're going to be doing a couple things. We're going to be getting the predicted values and the residuals out of our regression object, right? We're still working with those regression objects. And the nice thing about them is they stick around after, you're, after you've run the regression so that you can do things like pull the predicted values or pull the residuals out of them as you need. Uh, we're also going to be plotting our regression. Uh, we're both going to be plotting those predicted values and those, fit and those residuals, but also we're going to be doing a, uh, a scatter plot where we're going to overlay the regression object on top of our scatter plot. So let's start doing that. So I've already loaded up from, uh, from before, we have the foreign package to bring in our Wooldridge data. Uh, we have the Stargazer package to look at our regression tables. Uh, we have our Wage 1 data to load in. Uh, and then we have our Model 3 that we've been working with for the past couple of videos, which we can look at right here, okay? All right, so we have Model 3. So what are we gonna do with Model 3? So let's start by getting our predicted values and our residuals uh, out of this regression object. So we're gonna get the predicted values and residuals. This is pretty easy. All we got to do is run that regression object through the predict command and the residuals command. Uh, and we're going to store those in a place where we can use them. Uh, so let's get our predict, uh, our predicted values, predict out of model three. Now, and I'm just going to store it in its own variable. You can, if you like, by the way, uh, make this a new variable in your data set that you already have, but we're not going to do that right here, but you totally could do that. Uh, I would just, instead of doing predicted values, I'd say wage one, dollar sign predicted values, and then suddenly predicted values would be a variable in my wage one data set. Uh, today, I feel like just having it on its own, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. All right, we're also going to get the residuals. I'm just going to call that res. Uh, and I'm gonna call it, get that the residuals. I forgot whether it was residual or residuals. R Studio popped up to remind me. That's the nice thing about R Studio. And similarly, I'm just gonna put in model three. So now I have two variables. I have my predicted values and I have my residuals uh, and I can do whatever I like with them. Uh, so for example, I can check that the average of my residuals is zero, it should be. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and check if mean of residuals is zero. Just take the mean of residuals, do that. And it's pretty much zero, right? The e to the negative 16 there means that it's, uh, it's 1.19 times 10 to the power of negative 16. So take 1.19 and move the decimal place to the left 16 times, right? So it's a pretty small number, basically zero. About as close to zero as you get in statistics. Okay. So as I mentioned, we're going to be plotting some things. Now, it's pretty common, for example, to want to plot our residuals. Uh, this is one way in which we can look eyeball looking for heteroscedasticity, right? Because if the uh, if the header if the if the error term uh, appears to have higher or larger or smaller variance for different values of the of the uh, control variables, then we have some heteroscedasticity. So let's go ahead and do that for education. Uh, so we're going to check for for heteroscedasticity by looking at variance of the error term or the residual, sorry, against education. I'm only going to do it against education, but of course you might want to do this for all the variables that you're interested in. You think that there might be some relationship there. Okay, so it's just going to be a plot. Uh, first thing we put in plot is whatever goes on the x-axis, which is going to be our variable of interest, uh, which is way, the education variable from the wage one data set. Whatever goes next is the what's on the y-axis, which is going to be our residual itself. All right, so I can go ahead and plot that out make this bigger so you can see. Uh, so it does indeed look like we have some differing variate, some vi different variants uh, over the uh, length of the, uh, or, or over the different values of education. Uh, so first of all, let, let me go back and put in some label, axis labels on here. So we get X lab is education, uh, Y lab, not X lax, X lab, Y lab is residuals. And then the main title is checking for heteroscedasticity. And let's go ahead and split that onto two lines. Okay, uh, so let's remake that. Uh, and one thing that helps often in these graphs is a nice straight line at zero, because what we're looking, we know that the average of the residuals is zero. So the real question is how far away from zero does it get? How much variation is there? How wide is the distribution? So we've already done before how to put a straight line onto a plot. That's with AB line. Uh, where we put the intercept and then the slope. So here we want a flat line at zero, so we want it to have an intercept of zero and a slope 
of zero. So we'll add that onto our line. So now we have a nice straight line that we can use. So it's a little bit easier to see that in fact, then the, all the, the observations are pretty close to the line over here at low levels of education and they get farther away for values over to the right. So we're likely to have heteroscedasticity in this regression, uh, which of course we also found in the last video when we did the Broich pagan test and found that there was indeed heteroscedasticity. Uh, something we might also do sometimes is to plot the, the fitted values uh, which, or the predicted values, also known. Uh, now, if you only have one, one variable in your regression, uh, this will just be a nice straight line because your predicted values are just predicting on that variable. And so it's, it's going to be a nice straight line. But here, uh, because we have several control variables, all we're going to do is we're only going to be able to put one regression or one, one control variable on the x-axis. And so there's going to be some noise in there because of the, of the other variables that are in the, in the model. Uh, so this is the same idea here. Uh, we're just going to plot. We're going to put on the x-axis whatever we want. Let's say uh, we're going to put education again. Uh, and we're going to put the fitted values, the predicted values, on the y-axis. x-lab is education. Uh, y-lab is predictions. And main is uh, graph of fitted values. All right, can do that. Oop, wage one, not wage. There we go. And I'm doing typos all over the place. There we go. So you can see it's a nice, you know, positive relationship, which you'd expect because if you look back uh, at the model itself, there's a uh, positive coefficient on education. It's pretty large. All right, so we had a 0.529. So for every additional year of education, on average, we predict that the value of, uh, of wage is going to go up by 0.5, which is what we reflect here. The range of values for each level of education uh, has to do with the other variables. So for example, this person up here uh, with a very high predicted wage uh, at a education level of say 14 might have had say a very high tenure, whereas this person down here might have had a very low tenure, right? That's sort of what's going on here. All right, lastly, we're going to do a scatter plot and we're going to put the, reg the fitted regression line on top of that scatter plot. Uh, so again, we're going to do education. Why not? Uh, so we're going to do uh, plot, uh, plot the regression line on top of the scatter plot. Uh, so we're going to plot the data itself. Let's say we're still interested in looking at the relationship between education and wages. So we're going to have education on the x-axis. We're going to have um, our wage on the y-axis, x-lab education, y-lab wage, and the main is relationship between education and wages. Great. Okay, so we're gonna plot that out. Right? And this is the exact same plot that we did before when we were starting to get into the plot command, uh, but I wanna put a regression line on top of it. So how do I do that? Well, I could, go back to the regression uh, itself and then figure out what the intercept is and what the line is and put that into AB line, but that's way too much work. Remember what I said about how R will kind of know what you want? Uh, so what we want is to plot this regression line as a straight line. So let's do AB line and let's just stick our regression in there. Oops, got to actually run the command. There we go. And there it is, right? So there is the predicted value of our wage using the, uh, from the regression. Right, uh, and that goes going on top of our uh, scatter plot, which is describing the the regression itself. All right, that's the basics of it. Right, we can get our predicted values, we can get our residuals. There's plenty of things we can do with those other than plotting them, but that's just one thing we can do. Uh, so, for example, in the last video, we ran the Broich Pagan test with the BP test command. You could also run the Broich Pagan test by hand by yourself uh, using those residuals that you got from the residual uh, residuals command. We also plotted out the residuals and we put a nice flat zero line on it to let help us see the heteroscedasticity in the model. Uh, we plotted the fitted values and then finally we produced a scatter plot of the data with a fitted line on top of it, uh, the regression line on top of it, which is a very useful thing because it helps you do things like say, oh, you know, maybe this is what the, that's what the regression line is saying, but the, that doesn't, that's not what the scatter plot actually looks like. It looks very weird. Um, uh, lots of different things you can do with that. Uh, okay, uh, that's the basics of it. There's, of course, plenty of other stuff you can do, but that, that's where we're going to go ahead and start out. Most other things you can go, go to Google and look. All right, uh, thank you very much. I will see you once again in the next video.